What has made you no bright the duck of a sexual encounter? Story 1. Went to a very alternative punk girl's place for a booty call. She said she wanted to take a bath together and I was all for it. She goes to run water while I finish my drink. We're getting into it and head to the bathroom. We strip down and I get in the bathtub and sit down. Then I looked up at her and she was pulling razor blades out of a cabinet. She wanted to cut me and have me cut her. Nope. I've never gone from soaking wet to fully clothed and walking down a sidewalk so quickly in my life. I ghosted that girl and have no regrets. Story 2. Met a girl at a club and went back to her house. Everything is going fine. Nothing out of the ordinary until her housemate comes home. I was like, maybe we should stop or at least close the door. She replies with, oh no, it's, oh no, it's okay. He likes to listen and sometimes he watches from the hallway. She wasn't joking either. I put my clothes back on and walked out and there he was fapping away in the ducking hall. Story 3. This is my favorite story to tell. I'm a type 1 diabetic and my nickname, where I'm from, is diabetes. So everyone knows I have it, even though some people would still be like, oh, you're actually a diabetic. Anyway, I met this girl at a house party. One of my friends was throwing. This was back in 2010 to 2011. As the night goes on and drinks get consumed, we get all love drunk and go to bang it out. About halfway through our session, she randomly kicks me off and pushes me away. Stop, stop, I can't do this. I freak out thinking that I have done something horribly wrong. What's going on? What happened? She looks straight at me and I shit you not says to me. I just, I can't catch diabetes. All I could think to say was, you've got to be ducking kidding me. Her incredible response. And again, I swear on my inability to produce insulin. I'm not making any of this up. This is word for word burned into my memory. I just, I can't get diabetes. It's like cancer. I just can't catch it. By the time, she said cancer. I had my pants back on and was running down the stairs. I get back to the party and all my friends are like, oh, look who it is. How was it? You will never believe what the duck just happened to me. Story four. We were ducking when all of a sudden I start getting non-stop phone calls. I finally look at my phone to see if something is actually wrong. She looks at my phone when I pick it up and tells me not to answer and she has something to tell me. It was her husband's number. She didn't tell me she was married and her husband looked up who she had been texting and knew she was gone that night. For you curious ones, yes, I stopped ducking her that night and took her home. No, he couldn't have found me that night because we were on a boat because of the implications. This wasn't the first time she'd done this to him. They now are at least separated and she moved out shortly after that incident. After they separated, we ducked a couple more times because that booty though and I'll get an occasional Snapchat nude from her. Wouldn't ever have any relationship with her because I have no respect for her. She wasn't even apologetic about the situation. Story 5. I was on vacation in the Dominican shortly after graduating high school with five of my friends. Met this cute Bolivian girl on our resort and we hit it off. Few hours later, I'm in her room. We're going at it. She repositions onto her hands and knees and tells me to put it in her ass. I ask for lube and she hands me a bottle. I was giddy with excitement because I'd always wanted to do anal. I lather both of us up and slowly slide in. But she had clearly done this a few times before. Now I'm pumping her hard and have thrown caution to the wind. We hear a key card go into her door and the handle turn. She frantically whispers Novio. Boyfriend. And I realize I have about three seconds before I get my ass beat. I pull out at lighting speed and she yelps. Liquid shit sprays all over my stomach and dick. I grab my shorts off the floor and run out the balcony door and hop the ledge. Thank God that room was on the first floor. I don't think the guy chased me, but I sprinted anyway, still very naked and definitely covered in shit. I cleaned myself in the ocean and hit the bar. Story 6. I let a woman take me home from a pub here in Edinburgh. She seemed a little bit sleazy, but she had these jade cup boobs. Honestly, that had sort of got stuck in my eye and imagination. When we got to her place, it was about 2am. There were like seven kids running around in the flat, eating cake and candy and drinking ir and brew straight from two litter bottles. They were, most of them about 12 or less years of age, except one sullen 16 to 17 year old boy who sprawled in a chair staring at me and a dog running around. I went to the toilet and there was dog shit in the bathtub. The wheels for my mega boob fantasy night had just fallen off the wagon. I sort of didn't know what to do at first. 
I didn't want to stay, but I didn't want to tell her in front of her little tribe that I wanted to bail and then have to sit there and wait for a taxi to turn up on the outskirts of the city in a housing estate and risk some sort of confrontation that could turn into a horror show. So, I went to bed and fooled around a little bit and then claimed to be too drunk. She drove me home in the morning. No way was I getting involved with that scene. Story 7 So, after a really bad relationship, I tried to bounce back but really couldn't. There was a post-secret MySpace page where people would confess things. It got such an insane amount of traffic that you could post and have a very low chance of getting seen. So I post, I'm a massive dude and a 5 feet 2 woman beat and raped me. No one believes me and I feel disgusting, like no one will ever touch me again. It felt good to type that and get that out in the universe. So I go back to browsing profiles. Then I get back to my homepage and see new message, waiting for me. I click on it, and it's this beautiful girl who says, I've never been abused, but I know people that have. You can talk to me. Well, that seems fishy, but I was 23. Desperate, sad, and she was hot, so doke it. It actually turned out that she was only a couple of miles away, so we met at a park between us and hit it off. Went on our first date immediately after. Second date was the next night, and she picked me up. Took me back to her place, and we started making out like she was trying to draw my soul out through my mouth. We have one round of very normal sex, then about four minutes into cuddle time. She says, I want to go again, but let's try something. I'm not that adventurous, but I'm open. I say okay. She put a blindfold on me and started rubbing my body, and it was pretty intense. Then I felt something lightly squeezing my head, behind my ears, my temples, and the top of my head. I asked what was going on, she said. Keep the blindfold on because she's almost done. Okay, that's fine. Then, I felt her messing around with my ass. I felt my body stiffen because I wasn't quite ready for that, but she said, hey, just go with it another second. I'm almost in. Ah, almost in. She wasn't lying. She was shortly thereafter in, and I took the blindfold off, looked into her mirror, and there I was. Cat ear headband, cat tail butt plug in my ass, and her giving me the most wanting look I've ever had in my life. But it was time to go. Very, very time to go. Story 8. I have a few instances I can think of. One, while in the middle of losing my virginity, after sneaking a boy into my room, in the wee hours of the morning, he suddenly jumped up and started pacing the floor. He really needed to shit, so I said the bathroom was immediately outside my door to the right. He opens the door and then slams it shut. My dad was in the kitchen, which was in clear view of my bedroom door. He ended up just standing there and shitting himself. I'll never forget that smell. And I didn't have air freshener, so I sprayed some flying insect spray that had a sweet smell to it. Anyway, when the coast was clear, I escort him to the bathroom where he gets in the shower. I had to make it look like it was me showering. Therefore, I had to sit there in the bathroom while his shitty boxes stunk up the place. He gets out, puts his boxes in a few plastic bags and changes into fresh clothes, then tries to continue the sex. I was like, ah, oh, you can go out the window. We still keep in touch on FBI, and he uses that as a funny story to tell our mutual friends. 2. I picked a dude up at a bar who was hands down the funniest person I'd ever met, and that was severely attractive to me. It also helped that he was severely attractive. While going down on me, he asked me if I could take some pictures of him with his phone. I grab it, and as I'm taking the picture, his girlfriend sends him a goodnight text. I just hand him the phone, and he lets out an exhausted sigh. She won't stop telling me she loves me, and I don't want lead her on. Okay, kind of uncomfortable, but the coitus continues. He starts to get very rough with me, biting everywhere, making my lips bleed, calling me a whore, basically using me as a sex doll, which would have been fine if discussed beforehand. I don't like to be ambushed. Then, he grabs me by the throat and demanded I told him I loved him. Freaked me the duck out because of his crazy eyes. I had this intense sense of dread that's hard to describe. But it felt like in that moment I was in danger. So I just pushed him off of me, grabbed my clothes, completely wordless, and literally walked into the apartment complex hallway, naked, where I got dressed on the stairs. 3. And last but not least, the guy who, while I was lying naked on his bed waiting for him, proceeds to casually pull out a needle from his nightstand and shoots up right in front of me. He slid into the floor giggling, and I just got dressed and left without him even noticing. Story 9. First time at this girl's apartment, we were hanging out for a while, and she tells me she's always had this fantasy about being with a black guy. I figure that being one was to my advantage in this situation. So cool. 
definitely going to get some kind of action. We were making out for like 20 minutes and she gets undressed, and I get undressed, and we start getting really close to each other, and she goes, wait, stop, so I back off. And she goes, no, no, keep going. So I position myself back over her, and she goes, please don't. So I get up, done with it at this point, and she gets mad. You're ruining it. You're supposed to force me to. It's been like eight years and still nothing as crazy as being an unwitting participant in someone else's rape fantasy. Story 10. Almost lost my virginity, but didn't because of Pokemon. I was a teenage virgin in a long-distance relationship. Boyfriend calls, says his parents will be out of town and I should come over. I scramble, trying to figure out what people wear to sex, and we didn't even have a Walmart in my town to buy lingerie, let alone somewhere classy. I make the two-hour drive. We start making out in his bed, get a little hot and heavy, and I undress down to my sexiest bra and underwear. He gets up and goes to his desk, and I assume he's getting a condom, which got him huge bonus points, because I was a virgin and didn't really know how to ask about stuff like that. Instead, he pulls out a sketchbook, beams at me, opens to a page, and goes see this drawing of Charmander I made. I say, yes, and then he comes back to bed and starts flipping through his sketchbook, showing me his Pokemon drawings while I sit there in my bra and underwear, stunned by the turn of events. We do this for a good 15 minutes. Then later he tries to get us started up again, but I was just not having it. We fell asleep, still virgins, and woke up to watch Power Rangers, because why the duck not at that point, right? Story 11. She asked me to carve my name in her back with a rather large knife while I ducked her ass. There were other names. I'd seen this girl around at parties, but only spoken to her once, and I was on LSD for that, so I don't recall our conversation. Apparently, I said the right things, because she shows up to a house party I was throwing with a handle of Everclear Slung over her shoulder, and says if I pass out, it's cool. You can still duck me in front of a half dozen people or so. Fast forward a few hours. One of her friends passes out, so I carry her upstairs and throw her in one of the guest bedrooms. As I go to leave, she drops to her knees and starts blowing me. I stop her and tell her it's weird with her friend passed out on the bed beside us, and Will just got to my room, across the hall. She tells me it's a huge turn on having her friend passed out in the room, not because we might get caught if she wakes up, but because she fantasizes about getting ducked while unconscious. I'm young and horny and ori and already gotten part of a blowjob, so this doesn't phase me. We go to my room and bang it out for a while before I notice the scars on her lower back. I say something about them, and she reaches down to her purse and pulls out a ducking kabar and tells me to ask, duck her, and carve my name in her back. I said no, too weird, and got up and left. Story 12. Weird sort of crazy. Admittedly, this night alcohol was involved for both of us in large quantities, but apparently more so for her. Things get hot and heavy and we are about to go at it. She doesn't have a condom, and I was unprepared that night. Inexperience kicks in and go what the duck, to hell with it, and go in anyways. Couple minutes in, in addition to just being bad, she starts mumbling incoherent things, like not sex noises, like she's speaking tongues or something. I ask what she said, and get some response about how she can't actually tell me, because it was code, and she's an agent for the CIA, and this is part of her mission. Not role-playing, being serious kept on making references to it over and over. Then, when she got up afterwards, mumbled something else about calling her handler. Nope the duck out of there before she got out of the bathroom. Too much crazy, and on the, unlikely, chance she wasn't. I didn't want any part of that shenanigans. Story 13. We were only 13. Summer fling. She was very adamant about wanting to duck, which I found both exciting and frightening, and frightening considering I had never heard a girl talk like that before and also didn't quite understand what that implied. We were hanging out unsupervised with a few friends at a house party and snuck off to some bedroom. Clothes came off and some kind of instinct took over me. I just knew that I had to put my face down there and finally figure out what this pussy thing was all about. Maybe rub my face in it and see what happens. Well, as soon as I got down there, the most god-awful stench hit me. Like the first time you smell a rotting, dead animal. The smell of death. A primal, archetypal, ancestral memory that rushes to the surface and says, Stop what you're doing right now. Something is wrong. I don't even remember what my excuse was, but I managed to calmly pull her panties back up, say something stupid, and get the duck out. 
Years later, I realized she probably had a yeast infection and didn't know. Also, the way she was at 13, in general, not just the unusually high libido, implied she was being abused, probably by her father. After that summer, she mailed me a photo of herself spread eagle on a bed, photographer unknown, with a pretty explicit handwritten letter, which my mom opened and read, good times. That shit was traumatic enough that it helped delay losing my virginity for a little too long, but I'm so ducking glad I didn't lose it to her. Story 14. At the bar one night and it was pretty packed. I finally made it to the bar and this definite cougar comes over and starts hitting on me hard. I talk her up a bit, but play it cool. She's not bad looking, but not sure if I'm down just yet. I finally ask her what she'll have to drink. I wanted to just go ahead and buy her the drink, so maybe she'd back off a bit since I knew that's what she wanted. Got her some sugary mixed shot and after she threw it back, leaned in lightning fast and laid her lips on me. I pulled back after a second as this hot younger chick ran up and screamed, Mom, get out of here! You're ruining my... Instantly turned around and got away from that ducked up family reunion. Story 15. During my drunken single heyday, I met a woman at a bar during my friend's birthday outing, with whom I hit it off. We even made out in one of the restrooms. Lizzie, I know. We get back to her place and she informs me that her roommate will be home soon. Turns out he was her on-and-off-again boyfriend, who had helped her, financially, to get through her cancer treatment. Overwhelmed and quite uncomfortable, I decided to bolt, despite her insistence. After I left her apartment, I managed to get myself lost in the building and couldn't find a viable exit. I ended up having to crawl out of a window and managed to get out onto the side street, near the building. I walked toward the main drag and ran into the birthday boy. We had a drink and parted ways. Single life in New York never gets old. Story 16. Yeah, I was having sex with a girl who had a colorful history. Anyway, I was definitely wrapping it up and I had fingers her a bit. We start having sex and then this smell hits me. So bad. Like, so bad. Rotten flesh is what it smelled like. Anyway, I quickly end it before finishing and walk her to the bus stop as soon as possible. I get home and my apartment still smells so ducking bad. I end things with this girl and move on, but a week later, I can still smell this, but not all the time. Turns out it wasn't the girl. It was a bag of spoilt sausages. I must have thrown out my window when I was drunk or something, and it had been sitting in the sun, now mostly green, right under my window, the one I didn't open often, but had opened the night I was sleeping with this girl because cuddles had made it so hot. Oh, man. Story 17. My friend was a photographer for Suicide Girls back in the day. One night, he took me to a sort of industrial, gothic, fetish party at a club where his girls, models he shoots, were dancing. I wasn't much into that scene, but I decided to tag along because it piqued my curiosity. Walking through that dim-lit club was surreal. I felt like I walking through the set of eyes wide shut. There were rooms where people were ducking each other with dildos. One guy was completely naked, except for a gimp mask, and laid down on the floor in front of the bar, so that girls in high heels could step on him while ordering drinks. I saw a guy wearing girly Hello Kitty underwear and angel wings, getting whipped by a dwarf dominatrix, and an old guy strapped to a chair, getting his dick licked like a lollipop by three girls in Powerpuff Girls cosplay. It was ducking weird. I ended up hanging out a dark room full of vampires listening to the DJ Spin Insta Zender Nubaten, Bowhaus, Sisters of Mercy, and Joy Division, while my buddy went off to find things to take pictures of. I was sitting on a couch, drinking something called a Red Death that the bartender recommended, when a normal-looking girl showed up and sat next to me on the couch. Why normal? I mean, she just looked like she was in the wrong club. She was totally a Jersey Shore type, if you know what I mean fake tan glamour makeup, the whole nine yards. We start chatting and she invites me into a private room to get to know each other better. So I go off with her and I sit down on a chair while she starts dancing in front of me. Then she says she wants to suck my dick, so by that point I was down. She got down in front of me, pulled my dick out and opened her mouth, revealing a pair of giant ass-ducking vampire fangs. When I saw that, I freaked out and jumped out of my seat. She was like, what? You don't like me anymore. I asked her what the duck was up with her teeth, and she responded by saying that she identifies as a vampire 
and that her fetish is to bite into cock and drink blood from it while giving blowjobs. Dude, I got way the duck out there. I ditched my friend and went straight home to take a shower and reflect on my choice of hangout buddies. Story 18. I had been buying drugs from a friend for a while. I went to his house for some drugs one day, and his dealer was there. The dealer was your standard, large, intimidating, drug-dealing black dude. He had his hefty Spanish-Asian-looking girlfriend with him. Neither of them I had ever met before. I get my drugs and go home. About an hour later, drug dealer calls my phone and asks if I wanted to duck his girlfriend. I told him I wasn't sure. My house was a mess, and I hadn't showered in days since I had been a drunken, coked-up mess. He told me take a shower and clean my bedroom. He'll be at my place soon. I do this. When he gets to my house, he honks the horn on his car. I go out and he is standing in my driveway, car still on with her inside. He says if you want to duck my girl, get in that car and rub her pussy and tell her you're gonna duck her. I got in the car and thought about it and asked her if she wanted to or if he was making her. She said she wanted to duck a white boy. I invited her in and he followed so we three walk to my bedroom. She lays down and opens up, asking if I have a rubber. I'm a little nervous, pulling a condom out and attempting to strap it on, as this 350 pounds man is standing in the corner, squeezing his dick in his pants. I'm totally flaccid, cocked out of my mind, and shaking like crazy because he said he wants to watch. I threw the condom in the air with a panicked squeal and confessed no way in hell I could, I do that. Walked them both to the front door, pantsless, and apologized and thanked them for their time. I called my friend, whose house I had met them at, and told him I needed someone to talk to. He said the same thing had just happened to him. Story 19. My friend's more wild than I am, always traveling for concerts and events. He's at some show, and this cute girl is really into him. They're making out, and she asks if he's into dominatrix stuff. He's high as duck. Sure, why not? She takes him back to her apartment. Turns out it's her dorm, whatever. He has to do everything she says, starting with undressing. He was told to now face the wall and don't turn around. He's very high and trying not to giggle at this. She keeps asking him questions while feeling him up. Questions like, where are you from? And odd personal chit-chat. At some point, the feeling up stops, but the questions continue. She asks him to turn around but close his eyes. He does so, while failing to hide his laughing. She says something along the lines of this isn't going to work if you don't take it seriously and he loses it on the ground, laughing so hard. She starts yelling at him to turn back around and face the wall. He gathers his clothes and leaves laughing, always describes it as getting punished as a kid and being in an interview.